Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Mr. Fix-It channel. Today, I've got an old Yamaha in the shop, and I'm going to go through the steps that I take to troubleshoot a bike with a non-running condition. Stay tuned. I was sitting out there in the shed one evening, not doing too much of nothing, just kind of staring at the wall. And... So, this is a, I believe an 87 Yamaha TT. Pretty sure it's a 225. So, what I was told about this bike is that they could only get it to kind of like barely maybe pop a couple times and backfire and they think it's out of time so that being said i'm look just looking over things here and i'm looking at this carburetor they must not have had the factory carburetor so they got this chinese carburetor connected to this boot that's stuffed into this boot with a hose clamp and a bunch of it yeah so it doesn't have the proper carburetor on it. Uh, I don't know if this will even run this bike. I mean, it may idle. I don't know. I don't know what it'll do with that carburetor on it. But what I do need to do is I need to get the gas tank and the seat and stuff off of there. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if it even has spark. And I'm going to go from there. Oh, well, that was easy enough. Let's make sure the gas is off. It's on. That's off. Okay, take that off. None of the stuff was bolted together. Okay, so that was easy enough. So here's my spark plug. Okay, it's got an auto light spark plug in it. That's the wrong plug. This should have an NGK spark plug in it. So it could be part of the problem. See some black soot and it looks kind of fouled okay so when it comes to spark plugs I know this is the correct size and shape of spark plug you need but use the manufacturers recommended spark plug because they base the ignition system off of the spark plug and they all have subtle differences like the heat range and and how much stick out it has. there's a lot of variables in these spark plugs so if the book requires you to put an NGK in, put the NGK plug in. All right, so the kicker on this bike does not have a return spring in it, so I'll have to pick up on the kickstarter every time. I'm gonna stick the spark plug in the boot and ground it on top of the engine here and kick it over and see if there's any spark at all. I don't see any spark. So I don't believe there is like an on-off switch for this. I think it's just always on and you push the button to kill it. So let me, uh, let me make sure I'm getting through this paint here. So I don't see any spark. Okay, so I got to diagnose why there's no spark. Hopefully there's nothing wrong with the ignition box because that'll shut us down right away. Okay, here's the ignition box. And just come over here real quick and notice that there is some wires unplugged here. I'm going to get these wires plugged in and check for spark again. Alright, got spark. Now the next thing I want to check is I'm going to go ahead and check the compression. Okay, when you do a compression test you're going to want to hold the throttle wide open. But in this case we have a teeny little carburetor on there so it just is what it is and uh let's see if i can find a way to set this down so we can see it while i kick this thing over so this is going to be fun to do since the kicker won't return itself All right, that's enough. It looks like we got plenty of compression to run. Looks like 150, and it was still going up. So there's plenty of compression there for it to run. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to take the plug out of here and the plug out of there and take this cam cover off, and I want to check to make sure that the cam timing is actually in spec. Hopefully that's not a big deal because these have Phillips screws. Uh, technically they're JIS, but you got the point. And they're kind of stripped out, so I might have my work cut out for me just to get that cover off. 
but uh, I gotta check to make sure the cam timing's correct. Just being honest here, but more than likely the reason why this bike won't run is probably because of this carburetor setup here. Get you in here and look at that. We've got a carb into a boot, into a boot with some tape and some clamp. Yeah, this is more than likely the problem, but we'll keep going. So the best way I've found to get these slotted plugs out is they just use a big washer and a crescent wrench. This usually gets them out. That wasn't even tight, so that's good. Now I get these stripped out screws get this cover off in here. Now if you don't own one of these, go out and get yourself one. These are, I call them impact drivers. I'm not sure what the technical name is for them, but basically you put that in your screw head and you strike this in with a hammer and as you strike it, it actually rotates at the same time as you're striking it. So these will break loose those, those uh, pesky screws. This is my snap-on. This is uh, another brand here. So it doesn't matter which kind you get, get you one of these. Hopefully these aren't in here too tight. Good, that one came loose. These are very stripped out. I'm good, they came loose, nice. All right, now to check the cam timing, it's gonna be specific to whichever bike you're working on. But on this bike, I need to, and this is, some of these are really common. Some bikes are specific, the more specific areas up here on the cam, which marks blah, 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 where they're at. But they're all gonna do the same thing. So you need to look through this hole here as you rotate the crankshaft until you bring up the mark that has the T next to it. There should be two marks. There should be a T mark and an F mark. The T mark tells you it's top dead center. The F mark tells you when the spark plug is going to fire. Those are the two marks. We want the T mark to time the valves. So I'm going to turn this over. The, now what you got to understand here is, is the T mark is going to come up twice because the camshaft rotates once for every two turns of the crankshaft. You're going to turn that T mark up and as you're doing that you're going to put your finger over the spark plug hole and you're going to feel for the compression. That's going to tell you that it's top dead center on the compression stroke. We want the compression stroke. The T mark will also come up at the top of the exhaust stroke. So we, we want when both valves are closed. If you're still confused, you can't feel the compression, you can also pull the valve cover uh, adjuster caps off and rotate the engine around and watch for the valves to stop moving as you rotate the engine. Then line up the T mark. This is where a lot of people get confused because the T mark comes up twice. So I'm going to rotate, this, rotate the engine around until I feel compression, and once I start feeling compression, I'm going to look in this hole and look for the T mark to line up. Make sure you, make sure you go in the direction the engine normally turns, and if you don't know which way that is, normally it's going to be counterclockwise when you're looking at the engine this way, but another way to confirm that is just to grab your Kickstarter and rotate the engine and see which way it goes. Most engines is going to turn this way. So finger in a spark plug hole and I'm going to feel for compression. So that's the exhaust stroke. That was the compression stroke. Intake, compression. Now I'm going to start looking for the T mark. Alright, so I'm kind of having a little bit of trouble finding the right mark. This, uh, this flywheel has all kinds of marks on it, but nothing that's marked as a T or an F. That's unusual to me. So, confirming that it's in time is actually kind of difficult without the proper manual, because the manual told me to look for the T mark. And there's no mark in there with a T next to it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an idea 
because there is marks on this. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take something and stick it down the spark plug hole, and I'm gonna rotate the engine back and forth with the ratchet until I find where the piston stops moving at the top of its stroke. Now the mark on the camshaft should line up with that notch there in the case. So if I can get if I can find the proper mark for top dead center, I can be able to tell if the camshaft is in time. I'm just gonna take an extension. It's got a nice soft round point on the end of it. Stick that down in the spark plug hole. See if I can find the top dead center of the piston. If you're doing this, just be careful. You don't want to break nothing inside there, so just gently rotate it. Feel. Don't jam nothing up in there. Okay, piston's going back down. I'll back it up. You should feel it where it. You, you should be able to kind of feel it when you're rotating that it's top dead. Somewhere right there. That's within, that's within five degrees, I would say at least. Okay, that correlates with these two marks right there. Oh, now I see it. Okay, it's just, it, the edge of the flywheel looks like it's all scratched up from maybe someone sticking a screwdriver, I don't know. But it, that is the T mark. I do see the T now. Okay, so that's top dead on the piston. And the mark is off up here. All right, this is probably gonna be kind of blurry, but hopefully you can see what I'm talking about here. So there's that that line on the cam chain sprocket. They're wanting that to line up with this little pointer that's on the cylinder head when the engine is at top dead center. So I don't know if you can see in there or not. If you look in there, you can just barely see that there's a little arrow on the case cover and there's that line right there and right next to it is a T. Hopefully you can see that. So that's on top dead center. Now the book was saying that that mark right there should line up with that pointer right there. And what do you know? Looks like the cam timing is off. Alright, just to confirm you know, just to cover all the bases, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray some fuel into that carburetor and we'll kick it over a few times and we'll see if it makes any noise, if it pops or bangs or anything or nothing, whatever happens. And then I'm going to reset the cam timing and we'll try that experiment again and see if there's any difference. All right, I'm just going to use some brake cleaner. This stuff is very flammable. I'm just going to squirt some into the engine. With this kicker spring broken, this is going to be a bit of a trick, so let's see what happens here. Duh, you got to put the spark plug back in, dummy. Is this thing a gear? Okay, I noticed that something sprayed out of this intake and nothing should ever blow back through the carburetor. Yeah, it's, it's spraying the fuel I just put in there back through the intake boot, so not only is it out of time, there's a massive intake leak in that, in that conglomeration there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and set the cam timing and then we'll try that again and see if there's anything different happens. Okay, I'm gonna put this thing back in time. I'm gonna, I gotta take the timing chain tensioner out. So I'm gonna start with this bolt right here in the center, get that guy loose. And then we we'll go ahead and take this tensioner out. Make sure that you're on your T mark on the compression stroke when you do this. Technically it doesn't have to be on the compression stroke if you're going to redo this cam because the cam determines if it's compression or exhaust stroke. So 
Make sure it's on the T mark is what I'm saying. That's what's important. We'll take that out, set it aside. Now the chain's loose. You gotta take the bolt out of the center of the cam sprocket. Don't drop this washer in the engine. Take that out. I'm gonna slide the sprocket off the cam. Now I need to rotate the cam into position. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this chain off. Hang on to the chain, don't let it fall into the engine. So I'm just going to use the sprocket to align the camshaft correctly. And then since the engine rotates this way, all the slack is going to be on this side. That's why the tensioner is on this side. So when you set the when you set this, you want to make sure you pull the slack out of the chain on the front side of the motor, not the back side. So this side will be slack, this side will be tight. I'm just going to walk this around until that lines up. Now if I gently rotate the camshaft this way, clockwise, to take all the slack out of this side of the chain, this side of the chain, that mark should line up with that notch in the head. Now you want to check and make sure your T-mark is still lined up because you could have bumped it. And I did. So I need to make sure that's in time. So that bumped it. I'm, it looks like I'm one chain tooth off. You just got to fiddle back and forth with this thing until you get those marks to line up. Rotate it backwards a little bit and then forward. Look for your T mark. Okay, that looks like that's in time right there. Okay, now I got that set. So I'm going to pull the bolt out of the center of the tensioner. And inside there, there's a tiny little flathead screw that I need to screw in, and that'll draw this tensioner in. So I'm just using this flathead bit. I'm going to stick it in there, and as I screw this in, you'll see it draws that plunger in. So you're going to want to draw this all the way in, and hold it there, and then tighten the screws. Okay, i got the screws run all the way down, now I can let that go. And tighten these up. Put the center bolt back in. Okay, now I'm going to rotate the engine all the way around two full times, bring that mark back up, and check everything, make sure it's all still line, going to line up. All right, you can see that that dash is lined up with that, and the T mark is lined up with that. Now it's in time. So it was off three or four chain teeth, so it was never going to run like that. Now I'm going to spray some fuel into the carburetor and see what happens. Well, I gotta put that bolt back in first, but you know what I mean. We'll see what happens. There it is. So that's all that was wrong with it. It was just out of time. This is kind of tricky to kickstart this thing without a return spring. Yeah, it's going to run. I'm just curious if it will even run on this carburetor intake setup it's got going on here. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to kick it, see what happens. I don't know that this carburetor is even going to make it run.
Uh, this Kickstarter is super difficult. It's really trying to run. Might be getting flooded now. Try turning the choke off. She's smoky, but it runs now. When you're troubleshooting old bikes like this, or anything really, you, you, you want to start with the basics. It's that simple. Things like, is it getting fuel? Uh, does it have compression? Is there spark? Is the spark happening at the correct time? Is the cam in time with the crankshaft? Because the valves have got to open and close at specific times. Is there a problem with the stator? Because this bike does not have a battery. All of its spark energy comes from the stator. There's a lot of things that you need to check and it's really good to have a repair manual that gives you all these specifications that you can check against and find the problem. Now this is just some of the basics in troubleshooting. You know, we check for spark, we check the compression, uh, we check timing, and in this case the timing was the issue. So if it's a spark issue, you need to look at wiring, you need to look at the pickup coils or points. If it's a really old bike, it probably has points in it. Um, you can do leak down tests. There's all kinds of things that you can do to troubleshoot. Uh, best advice I can give you is get the repair manual for your bike and just start testing things. See if it works. Hey, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and don't be afraid to fix it. Thanks for watching.